It's a new year. I have a new 2024 DaVinci Resolve network database. This is that middle tab when you open Resolve, and it's the one that you can use totally for free, even with the free version of Resolve, to have multiple editors working in the same project at the same time. I've got another video all about that. But what I'm going to show you is actually, now that I have that created, how do you back it up? How do you back it up so that it backs up? nightly and so that uh, maybe it even connects to Google Drive and there's a few little gotchas because if you've worked in post for very long sometimes some stuff happens and you might need to get a project back for whatever reason the next day. All right, we've got DaVinci Resolve Studio 18.6 loaded and I've got my new project library which is also called a database. It's just their new way of calling it as a project library. It's still a database. The thing I'll point out is when you go to add a project library or create one, do it with no spaces. This is going to save you a lot of headache. Just trust me on this. And this computer I'm on right here, this is my local M1 Max laptop I've been using for a couple of years. Love it. But the way I get to the computer that actually has my server running is I use an app called Jump Desktop. So I'm going to load that up right here. And also just a side note, a Jump Desktop is actually a great way to edit from one computer to another. So Sometimes I'll even edit with the other computer that I'm not even sitting in front of. Uh, actually, that's how I work most of the day in different areas of the country. You can have access to tons and tons of different machines. Anyways, let's get back on task and go straight back to my CVT Studio M2 computer. And just a quick little thing. If you don't have DaVinci Resolve Project Server, which looks a lot like the Project Manager in Resolve, it, it's free. It's also available on the Blackmagic Designs website if you click on Resolve and go down to Project Server. Okay, amazing piece of software. I can't believe they give this away for free. Um, and then as far as getting the backups going, we're using this GitHub website from Seth Golden is the one that has has been running and, and managing and continue to develop it. And on here, there is a spot for latest on the far right side. So click on latest. And you can make sure you get the latest version of the code, which you do want to get. And I'm going to grab the source code right here. This was updated March 16th of last year. So it's uh, pretty recent. And the main thing is it's the 2.0 version. So grab that. And then it obviously goes into your downloads folder. You unzip it. And within here, there's some shell scripts. So these .sh files right here, these are shell scripts. Um, there's uh, Mac and there's Linux. I don't think there's one for Windows, but um, I'm showing you how to do it on Mac today because that's what I use and that's what I know. It's really actually simple. So to actually install these, we're going to open up Terminal. Now, don't be freaked out by hearing the word Terminal. There's not a lot you have to do um, with terminal. So I'm going to use, I'm using uh, command space to, you know, hit my spotlight and then start typing terminal that loads it up. And we have this, this terminal window here. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this so you can see this window a little bit better. All you need to do is a very, very simple command. Okay. We're going to type in sudo and then sh. Okay. And then from here on, it's super, super easy. So it's sudo space, sh space. And then from here, we're taking the macOS install script, dragging it over here, click in there, hit return. And that's going to ask me for a password because we're operating as a sudo user. The password here is your admin user password. So to do this, you do need to be an admin of the account that you're signed into. But I'm just going to type in my admin Mac user password here. Okay. And now it's it prompting me with a question of what, what do we want to be backing up? So Postgres SQL database is the same as Project Library. We talked about that before. So I want to back up this 2024 CVT network database. Okay. So I'll type that in there. 2024 underscore CVT for creative video tips network. And then hit return. Did I enter that right? Yes, I did. So let's hit Y, return. And then where do we want the backup to go? Again, this is easy. You can drag and drop. And he's got these great instructions on here on how to do that. So the, the key tip here I want to say that I have found useful is make use of your movies folder on a Mac um, for a lot of reasons. But just let's just go with because Chadwick says so today. <laughs> Anyways, within here, I have created a folder called CVT Studio Backups. And the key thing I'll tell you about this one is that there's also no spaces in it. So that 
is another key thing here. You, if you remove spaces, you don't have to do extra work, okay? So I'm gonna drag this CVT Studio Backups folder that I created in my Movies folder into here. We're gonna hit Return. And it's like, is that correct? Is that what we're, where we wanted to go? Yes, of course. So we hit Y again. And now there's two parts to a database backup. There's the backup part and the optimization part. So the first thing it's asking, how often do we want to back it up? Well, I want to get a daily backup. And there's even a cheat code here for every 24 hours. And it's based off of seconds. So I'm going to type in, it's, what is it, 530 in the morning right now? I'm going to type in 86400. So I know, and then I'll hit return. So I, and then basically it's going to every 24 hours at 530 every morning, it's going to back this database up. So I'm ready to go once I have my coffee and I'm ready to work. It's also going to confirm these before we, we go on. So I hit Y again, return. And then the next part is optimized database. So if you, if you uh, didn't realize within these, we have an optimized category. And what that does is it re-indexes your database, it just it makes it a little bit faster. It cleans up anything that is like out of order when it's writing the list, as far as I know. Um, and it's actually a really, really helpful thing to do when you have really large databases, you know, projects with thousands of timelines, which this can handle, believe it or not. So for the same thing on this one, I'm going to do 86400. It'll do the backup, and then it'll do the optimize right after. Why again? And look at that, congratulations. It will be backed up and optimized daily. And believe it or not, it's really that easy. Now you can see we have a 2024 backup file that has been created. It's less than a megabyte because there's actually only two projects in there right now. But this other one right here was two gigs. That's why I do a new one pretty much every year. But there's a little green little checkbox next to it. And that's indicating that this has actually been backed up to Google Drive. Now, after you install Google Drive, which you don't need a tutorial on how to do that, it's an application you could install to your Mac. It's up here in my header bar. And the way you get this set up so that stuff syncs to it directly, or at least how I do it, you hit this little gear switch, go to preferences, and then you've got a, a tab for um, from uh, folders from drive and folders from computer. So we want to pay attention to folders from computer section and then just add a folder. And the folder I added was obviously it was this CVT Studios backup. Uh, it's pretty easy. You hit add folder. You take it directly to the directory that you want to be backing up. That's the one I chose. You hit open and that's it. And if you ever need the backups to stop running for whatever reason let me show you it's basically there's an uninstaller you just run that so let me go over to the computer again and we've got our terminal window open here you could make a new one if you wanted to you would do the same thing as before type sudo sh and then you would go to the save i want you to save this um, package this installer um, folder somewhere safe because you'll just take the mac os uninstall.sh script drag that into here, click on there and hit return, enter your password for your Mac again, okay? And then it's basically wanting you to do the same process and as soon as you type in the name of the exact database, it removes it, that script won't, will not run anymore and you won't be backing up. So this is actually what you also do if you need to change the time interval. So if you want it to not be every single you know day and you wanna change it to a week uh, which would be another option if you don't work quite as often in Resolve, uh, that's the way you would do that. You would uninstall it and then reinstall it with the new time interval. I hope you have a great start to the new year. I have a lot of stuff planned for this channel this year. I know this was a niche one, but I hope it was of use to you. If it's not, then I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>